It's the KSO Show. I'm Derek Young. Happy Friday to all of you listening. Maybe happy Saturday morning, depending on when you are listening. It's the KSO Show. I'm joined by Grant Flanders. Time to talk a little football, Flando. Yes. You ready for some football? You know I'm ready for some football. Oh, I'm ready we for some football. got K-State Southern Illinois. Night game. Tomorrow. Six o'clock. Tomorrow night, six o'clock. Like, Recorded on Wednesday, but tomorrow night, if you're listening to this on Friday, are you six afraid, o'clock. Are you afraid of the dark? You know I'm not afraid of the dark. Okay, we got football, Kansas State Wildcats, <laughs> Southern Illinois Salukis. Are you afraid of Southern Illinois? Uh, offensively, they could be a little scary, but no, not for this K-State team I in the grand we'll, scheme. I think the Wildcats score. I think I think the Salukis are going to score. Yeah, I think the Salukis score a little bit as well. Yeah. No doubt. That's I, that's what will scare you. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll talk about get piping. Well, let's, let's talk first. What yes. do you yes. think we saw against Stanford on the good side for Kansas State that carries over? To tomorrow, Saturday, football game, Southern Illinois. Um, what do you think carries over? Good uh, defensive line play, continued pressure on the quarterback, which is going to be key to making uh, this – what's his name again? I'm sorry. The, the quarterback? The, the Saluki's quarterback. Nick Baker. Nick Baker. I need to uh, ingrain that in my mind for the next few days because I do believe getting back there, he just threw for four touchdowns in the last game. Um, you know, he's going to be a guy that throws it around. I mean, and – the defensive line, I think, because the secondary wasn't great against Stanford. They were okay. I think they, they did fine. But in the grand scheme of things, I do believe the second level and that defensive line were even more impressive. And I think that's something that will carry over against the Salukis. I think something that will carry over is how fast they can play. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that was a fluke. I think the, the bigger, faster, stronger thing, I think it's real. And I think it was Drew Carroll really setting the tone for this program. And I think that's a big thing for the Wildcats moving forward. I don't think it's a fluke. I don't think it's a week one thing. I think it's a week one, week 13, week 14 thing. I think we'll see it all year. Yeah. Playing fast doesn't give you wins. So you got to also know what your job is, be assignment sound, and make the tackles, make the play in front of you and all that. But I do think we still see them fly around the ball. Can they rally to the football still? You can also play fast, but do you rally to the football? We'll see. I'd like to see that continue. What maybe – I don't know, piss poor. I don't know if that's. Yeah, I don't know if that's. that's I don't know if that's, that's the word. Fine what negative KSO things that, that we saw against Stanford do you think might carry over here? Mm, you know, that's a tougher one because you know I'm an optimist. But if I had to think about some negatives that could carry over, is that right side of the offensive line? Like why? Why? Why should I think Christian Duffy all of a sudden is a new player than what he was against Stanford? Um, and obviously, they still like him there. He played most of the snaps there. I mean, eventually, if he continues to struggle, you think they'd move Carver Willis there. But how prepared is he to play that position all season long? So I will say that right tackle position does worry me some. I will say the pass coverage. I, I It might not be as gaping or, or as um, exposed, even though it didn't, they yeah. didn't. Even though Stanford didn't take advantage of it. But I do think that we're going to see them give up quite a bit of chunk yardage in the passing game. Um, can they shrink it of the field, maybe tighten it up in the red zone, produce some turnovers to negate that, um, or at least overcome that? Probably. I think mm-hmm. I think that's at least going to be. Um, that's the route to take in terms of how to defend it. But I think the Southern Illinois is going to get some yards through the air. Uh, what's up? What's up? Something you're concerned about this week that you didn't have to be concerned about last week. That's it. It's your answer that you just threw out there. I mean, yeah, this, I mean, the, because we didn't have to be concerned about it last week because exactly. Stanford didn't take advantage. Because Stanford didn't take advantage. I also was never very – even going into the game wasn't very high on, on those quarterbacks to be gunslingers, mm-hmm. whereas um, Baker is going to be, a, uh, I think, a gunslinger, at least more of that type and more of what they're going to see in the Big 12. And that and that is a worry um, that, and something that they will have to address because that's the thing. The secondary – could look really, really good this week if they're able to stop that man. I think they'll be able to in doses. I think they're going to give up their share of yardage, but maybe make some big plays. Yeah. So um, because I think really how they are going to have to attack it is maybe just through opportun- being opportunistic, mm-hmm. creating turnovers, or just being good on third down and getting off the field. So we'll we'll see what it looks like in the that front. Uh, what's something that you think that maybe it was a little lackluster last week that could be mightily improved this week. Chunk plays for, through the air for Kansas State's offense and to wide receivers. I really think that's something that needs to get figured out. I think Phillip Brooks had a, obviously had a really nice gainer 
Um, but besides that, there wasn't a lot through the air that really impressed me that I can think off off the top of my head besides a few intermediate passes here and there. Miss, but I want to miss see some, some more chances. Days. Yeah, miss some chances. They had Phil Brooks running wide open for almost the, the entire day. Yep. Um, I want to see Malik Knowles get open and yeah. both running wide open in the yeah. In the, so and, and Skyler probably, Thompson finding them. Yeah, they probably missed on some connections with Philip Brooks there um, last week. Uh, so a poor throw to Daniel Matter Bay yeah. down the field that, that could have resulted in a touchdown as well. I'm not sure if I'm missing anything else. Maybe we'll, we'll see a little Tyron Howell. I, I mean, he played enough snaps yeah. last week. Just you know, he got one look, caught the ball on that target, but it was called back because of a penalty. Okay, but uh, I think the one thing where I say looks a lot better than last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm the one asking the questions, but that's a challenging one too. <laughs> I like your answer just yeah. because I do think Southern Illinois will probably focus more on the rushing attack. Um, but I will say the offensive line. Yeah. I, I I think I don't think they were lying or trying to. You know, put the throw the wool over our eyes all off season or throughout fall camp. I think they were con- they were seriously genuine when they said this offensive line was the strength of the team. Mm-hmm. I've never seen Connor Riley so confident about that, and obviously we heard that from every player and every coach. So I think the offensive line is a, com- a complete game, maybe not complete game because it's tough to have a complete game in, in week two. So um, you, offensive lines take wiles to take a bit to mesh. But I do think we see a night and day performance. I don't think we see the drop off in performance or yeah. caliber uh, that we saw last week in the third quarter and beyond. So I think that we see a more complete game from the offensive line where they command the line of scrimmage. Um, whether that just you know results in more uh, more uh, protection mm-hmm. for Skylar Thompson and more time to throw or more rushing yards, I don't. Exactly no, but I think they're really going to control that line of scrimmage against the Salukis. I think it's going to be both, and I think part of the reason is, I mean, I could be wrong on this, you know. I think Christian Duffy's going to have a huge back uh, bounce back game. I, I, I think we, we for, for whatever reason, I think yep. he had a lot of friends and family in the house because he's from Texas. Mm-hmm. It was his first time playing a lot in front of that. I think the nerves really got to him. I think, because they talked about Christian Duffy having one of the best off seasons through, uh, of the entire team. I think we see that come to yeah. fruition against Southern Illinois. Maybe I could be caught off guard, and maybe you know this answer. Would that is the Saluki's defensive line anything like what that Stanford defensive line was, which was pretty solid, Power Five defensive line? No, well, I mean it could be, but but I mean maybe this is me being a little naive. I mean that's a big defensive line for Stanford, and yeah, I think and so I, I and, and even if not skilled, that's tough to handle still just because of the size and just the mass that it takes or that they had to move. So I will go out on a limb and I know I say go out on a limb because I can't say I I sit there and comb through, you know, over a hundred hours of Southern Illinois film (laughs) like these coaches have, Uh but I will go out on a limb and say that this defensive line from Southern Illinois, probably not the same caliber or as at least not as cumbersome in terms of being able to move it as Stanford. Which makes me do believe that K-State could have some, a lot more success on the offensive line. Obviously, then you want to see that carried over into more games against uh, better defensive lines. But I do agree. It could have been more of a shell shock thing for Christian Duffy with his whole family down there. Um, and I, I, yeah, I think bounce back game for Duffy. I mean, yeah, they haven't given up on him by any means, not even close to it. Um, expect him to start and play a lot of snaps and and get back to the, his consistent play that we saw from last season. Yeah, he was pretty good a year yeah. ago, and and he, he I mean he he started a lot of games last year. So I he, yeah I'm not raising the alarm bells. I think there's a chance that we really see this offensive line take a hold of a game the way maybe we were envisioning when we were hearing everybody you know prop them up throughout fall camp. This might be the game where we see that really happen. Um, Maybe not that many punts. I, I really do think Kansas State offensively is going to roll this mm-hmm. week. I, I just have a really good feeling that Southern Illinois is really not going to have an answer for them. I mean, I agree. This is the game where you should be able to see all these playmakers that have been talked up all season long um, come out and, and play. I mean, I, I expect a lot of the ball getting spread around, a lot of Keenan Garber, a random name that you may not be – I mean, unless you're on KSO, you may not have seen a lot of. I think he could get a lot of touches and see what he has in store. For, uh, Joe Irvin could get uh, – 
get some more touches and we can see the explosiveness that the coaching staff has raved about all offseason long as when he came back um, from opting out last season. A lot of things, I think, offensively, you're right about that. And even Malik Knowles, I want to see at least one post route over, dropped over, dropped in the bucket by Skyler like we're used to seeing against solid competition, but lower lev level, you know, um, FCS opponents. Yeah, I mean, there's – I mean, to be to put it bluntly, they underperformed as a unit against Stanford, so it would be really reassuring to see the offense take a giant step forward and at least show the flashes or, or the potential that we were, you know, assuming we would see from from them, you know, throughout the off season. And quite frankly, if we don't, and it's a little bit of kind of another dud from the offense, mm -hmm. one against Stanford and then again versus Southern Illinois, I'd probably be kind of concerned at that point. Um, heading into the Nevada game that, man, this might not be the, you know, effective offense that I was anticipating when I predicted a 9-3 and three record. And even after the week one, and everyone's going to overreact to every single team and how they look in week one, I was like, you know, I'm not going to – not going to be that guy and jump off my nine and three bandwagon yeah. already, but it, you know it probably looked more like an eight and four team in my opinion. You asked Skyler after the game if if it was Russ or after, on Tuesday this week if it was Rust, and he said no, it wasn't Rust. It was more jitters. Yeah. I do believe this is where okay he needs to prove it to us that that certainly was jitters, no Rust, and he's the the old quarterback that we know him to. Yeah, and I, and I guess I think Rust and jitters a little bit. It is kind of similar. one one in the same yeah. there because um, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do need the offense to reassure me a little bit this week. So if they Absolutely. don't, then uh, Nevada uh, gets to be. Then a, then we, we might. I mean, Nevada's going to be scary no matter what. No matter what, yeah. especially if the offense doesn't look on point. But even if they do, it'll still scare. It will. Me. But yeah. I, but the point is, I might pick Nevada if if the offense doesn't you already look did. great. Oh, did I? Well, you're right about that. Before the season. <laughs> but come next week, my official prediction going into the game. Oh, they're going to win unless they lose. Right? <laughs> that, that's your go-to. The point is, if they don't look good on offense this week, I will be that like that much more terrified for Nevada. Quick look at the defense. I know we've talked a lot about it already. Um, really good numbers. Really look fast. Played fast, you know, last Saturday against Stanford. And that's probably what the largest takeaway was. It's like, okay, these guys are, are bigger, faster, stronger, which is what they were really gunning for in the offseason. Love to see that. At the same time, probably got away with a little few things, bailed out because Stanford had really piss-poor quarterback play. Yeah. Probably not going to get piss-poor quarterback play this week from Southern Illinois, but um, still a game where the defense shouldn't be completely overwhelmed. But I could see them giving up some chunk plays um, and it really might come down to how many times are they able to get off the field on third down yeah. and how many turnovers they can produce. And you mentioned it in the matchups um, pod that we had on Wednesday about how important it is for the defense to be huge in the red zone. That's going to be you know, even more important than they saw against Stanford, who rarely got in the red zone. This team will be in the red zone more often. It's holding them to three and not allowing them to get to six in those, in those opportunities. Yeah, I, I could still see – We'll give our final prediction here probably in a few minutes. Um, a bold prediction I made in the off season. This is because Southern Illinois special teams was really, really shitty <laughs> last year. Um, they give up their share returns. They were really shitty. Yeah. Um, so this is the game. Just ruined Kansas, monetization on Kansas this YouTube. Kansas State. Kansas State. I'm going to spray off every – I'm just kidding. Keep <laughs> going. I'm sorry. I, I ruined your rant. K-State's really, really good just about every season, regardless of the head coach apparently, and getting special teams touchdowns. If ever a game was like a blinking red light, yeah. says we're going to freaking score a special teams touchdown in the return game <laughs> on the entire schedule, it's this one. Southern Illinois is really shitty. And it's probably going to be Philip Brooks, Problem. who kudos to and shout so, outs to Drew Galloway. He called that even before the season that it was going to be the second game. It, it, there's Brooks a very good chance. Return. We'll yeah. see. We'll Phil, see if it happens. It, it, this if one's not, a blinking red talking. It, it might. It, yeah, it, it might be. It might be too obvious. Like, but Phil, but this is the blinking red light game. Kick return, punt return, touchdown. This is the blinking red light game. Maybe it's Malik in the kick return game I like too. That too. Um, <laughs> but this that you know, if you're going to call it. This is the game to call it. So, um, final predictions. We'll, we'll go a player of the game on each side of the ball, too. Um, we'll do players of the game first. Offense, player of the game. Go. I'm going to go. I've been talking about Malik Knowles. I, this is going to be the game. I want to see him have at least one score and go for at least like 70 hearts through the air. And I think that will be enough 
for player of the game um, offensively. What about yours? I think Southern Illinois is going to try to smash the run game, which and I don't know if they'll have success doing it, but they'll probably try. Um, not real flashy. This guy, guy. I, I, no, I think I think technically the offensive line was is probably going to come away is probably the MVP of the game, mm-hmm. but no one ever gives it to the offensive line. So you know who opens it up because of what the offensive line does. Maybe Daniel Matter Bebe. You. He had some real chances against Stanford. I think he'll probably have some play action chances against um, against Southern Illinois. I mean, they were in Kansas State was a lot better in play action than drop back against Stanford. And if they're really and if Southern Illinois is really going to sell out in the run game, then I could see Daniel Matter Bay Bay being pretty effective in the play action pass game. Uh, defensively, who you got? Give me the grown man. Grown, uh, <laughs> grown man. Oh, well, it could be Jalen Pickle, but the guy next Tim to Horn? him, Timmy Horn. To, I mean, he, he he didn't even play as much as I thought he would against um, Stanford. Still was on the field a bunch. I'm going like. to stop you real yeah. quick. We didn't talk about yeah. this. I feel like Go maybe ahead. we should touch on it for 30 mm-hmm. seconds. Uh, are you worried that Daniel Green's not playing in the first half? Oh, we did forget to talk about that. Um, yeah, that is worrisome. That means that Southern well, Illinois probably has a really, really good first half compared to what could have been a pretty good first half. Yeah. Um, and I, I bet we see Nick Allen. Yeah, Nick Allen. Yeah. Nick yeah. Allen will probably replace him. Okay, so and I, would, I mean, unless they want to try Wayne Jones and Hennington there, since there'll probably be a, be a different lineups, so and they won't need them as much in the positions they played against Stanford. But yeah, Nick Allen's probably the next guy up after him. And Tim Horn's your stud. Um, He's gonna move that def- that offensive line out of the way. That's all I. Know. My stud against Southern Illinois. I think the tur- I think they I think they're going to force some turnovers. So who, who go. who's going to make those splash interception plays is probably the pick. Reggie. Give me I, Reggie. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I also think Khalid Duke could probably annihilate uh-huh. his guy on the offensive line too. Oh, yeah. if there's a chance that spin move was sexy. Um, Got me going. I, 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 Echo, give me Echo. Yes. Echo Boydo. I'm glad you said him. He was, he was going to be like he was my top echo. three. I so, mean, yes. your voice echoes in here. Oof. Give me some Echo. Echo, echo Boy, Island. Echo Boydo. So what's your score? What's your score? Cats. Cats by ninety. <laughs> Cats by ninety. Uh, give me K State thirty eight. Saluki's twenty eight. It's not going to be the most convincing game, which will if that's if that's what it ends up being. Yes, I will be that, picking yeah. Nevada for sure. Come friday next week yeah that that's that prediction might piss some people off actually well, then, I, you go cats by 90 right <laughs> you do it baby um so you got the cats 38 28 interesting bill Connolly. you know he does the sp plus he has the cats i think his his formula said 35 22 so not far off from where you had it uh, i'm going to go something i said pre-season actually because I, I still think i feel quite good about that maybe not exactly what i had there but uh clo- close to it yeah close to it Said so cats forty two. I like it, and um, probably feel less comfortable about the, what the cats score. But I'm going to go forty two. It could be less than that, and I'll say Southern Illinois twenty forty two twenty. I think forty two is a, a smart. I mean, honestly, I sh- the smarter uh, yeah, pick from you to uh, say forty one because there's a better chance we see one field goal. But. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, we'll see. I I think thirty five twenty might be more accurate, but I'll stick with forty two twenty field goals. But yeah, no, I I like that pick. Um, and that's I think that is that is the score I'd like to see, and then be able to go. Okay, K State might be able to beat Nevada next week, and and if they beat Nevada next week, then we're talking about a special season possibly coming. Uh, I think it'll be too soon. Still. Okay, that's fine. Too soon. That's fine. Maybe I'm too high on Nevada, but I, I have to stick with it. I picked them. It'll be too soon. I, I say too soon just because you you still have to get through that Big Twelve first three. I say, game I say I'm going to be saying fifteen. I'll say fifteen right now. I'll say fifteen next week. I'll say fifteen. Fifteen big ones, baby. Fifteen no. large. Yeah. 15 okay. Large. Uh, he's Grant Flanders. Sometimes <laughs> he's out of his mind. I'm Derek Young. You've been listening to the KSO show. That was our pick and preview. I got the cats forty two twenty. He's got the cats thirty eight twenty eight. Don't listen to him. He's just you know hey, don't listen does, to me. Doesn't know his thus he doesn't know his ten stuff. ten ten only a ten point win, but they're still gonna get fifteen wins on the catch season. Us, I don't know how. Catch us Saturday night. We'll have a quick uh post game pod reaction as well. And as always, tell your friends. Tell them.